Hello everyone, welcome to another webinar from SQL Maestros. Today's topic is TempDB Fundamentals. Even though the session title says TempDB Fundamentals, we are actually going to go a little deeper and do a few things more than just fundamentals. In fact, we are going to look into troubleshooting TempDB and we are going to see a lot of scripts that you can actually use in production right away. My name is Amit Bansal. I am going to be your host for today's one hour session. I have been working with SQL Server for many years now, about 23 to 24 years. I am also a Microsoft certified master of SQL Server and my core area of specialization is performance tuning. So let's get started with TempDB. Now, as always, I don't want to use slides, so I have put a few talking points before we jump into the demos. Now, first thing, everyone uses TempDB. That means that there are a lot of services inside SQL Server that will use TempDB. And this is where things go little problematic, primarily when the physical memory is less. So it's really like how the paging thing works in the operating system. So a lot of these internal operations inside SQL Server will utilize the physical memory. And if physical memory is not enough, SQL Server will tend to write into TempDB data files. So, and what are those operations? What are those features and functionalities that will use TempDB? We will come to that in a moment. So first thing to note here is TempDB is just one TempDB for your entire SQL Server instance and anybody and everybody uses TempDB. Second, it is non-durable, which means it is recreated each time the SQL engine starts which means there is actually no recovery mechanism for TempDB. Uh, only thing that can happen really in TempDB is rollback operation. So TempDB does have a log file and that is minimally uh, logged and it is only for the purpose of rollback, not recovery. So of course, this clearly tells you that you should avoid putting stuff in TempDB that you really want to persist. As mentioned uh, just now, it is minimally logged. So it's good for a lot of those uh, temporary operations. And in fact, one of the demonstration is about minimally logged. And you will be amazed if you don't know this already to see how uh, quickly things like updates and inserts go so fast in TempDB uh, because the operations are minimally logged. One of the best practices about TempDB, apart from a lot of other things that we are going to talk about, is put TempDB on a very fast storage to get the best performance. In fact, um, the TempDB data files and log files should have their own isolated, dedicated storage and try to put them on very fast storage drives because all these internal operations, if they go really fast with IO, it will impact the overall SQL Server performance. And that performance is quite visible. So those were just a few talking points about TempDB database, which is a system database to mention the least. Now, what about uh, the storage in TempDB. So what is really stored in TempDB? Now things, these are, these are things that you know, but just let's call them out all your global and local temporary tables, they are stored in TempDB. You know, the ones that you create with hash and double hash, etc. they all get stored in TempDB. And also table variables. Uh, there is a myth that, okay, table variables are only created in memory and they're not stored in TempDB. That is untrue. Table variables also get stored in TempDB. Um, this session is not the right discussion to compare between temporary tables and table variables, but just keep that in mind. Table valued functions and cursors, etc. You know, when you use TVFs and cursors and then you use tables inside them, they're all stored in TempDB. Then you have set of internal objects like work tables and work files. So what are work tables? Work tables are used internally inside SQL Server uh, by operations like spooling or sorting or cursors. Um, and these are not that you create explicitly, but they are internally created by SQL Server. They all get stored in TempDB. Likewise, SQL Server needs a few work files when it's doing operations like hashing and sorting, and they also get stored in TempDB. When you're rebuilding indexes, and if let's say this clause is turned on, sort in TempDB, if this is specified, then again, that operation is going to utilize 
10 dB storage. Functionalities like, you know, version stores, um, uh, like the read committed snapshot, uh, snapshot isolation, right? Optimistic concurrency. So if you're implementing snapshot isolation, optimistic concurrency, it's going to store multiple versions of your data in TempDB. That's typically called as version store. So I'll show you a demo of that as well. Uh, and that also gets stored in um, TempDB. Online index operation, you know, when you, you can rebuild indexes offline and online, etc. So if you are choosing to do an online index operation, so the temporary data related to that is stored in TemDB. Availability groups also uses TemDB quite a bit. A couple of features inside uh, availability groups for its temporary operations will use TemDB. So you can see that the list is not small. There are so many things that will use TemDB. And I will also tell you that this list is definitely not a complete list, but the I, I try to highlight the most common uh, things, objects, features that will utilize TemDB. Now, what is our real content for today's session? I We are going to do four demos here. First, I am going to talk about the impact of having multiple data files for TempDB. A lot has been spoken about this, but we sometimes really want to see things in action. And this is what I will do with the first demo. Then the second and third demo is going to focus on TempDB allocation monitoring and TempDB usage monitoring, which is the, the one of the common problems with TempDB is my TempDB data files are growing huge and I don't know what's being consumed inside TempDB, etc. These are common questions that I see in many forums. So the idea of demo two and demo three will be to identify who is using space inside TempDB and for what purpose? Can we identify the session? Can we identify the task? This is what we are going to do. Demo 4 is just going to be a very small demo where I will show you the impact of minimal logging. In one of my customers session uh, recently, we talked about this minimal logging and I ran the same demo that I'm going to show you today and they were like amazed. So this was an eye opener. So probably for some of you too, I am assuming this is going to be an eye opener. How minimal logging will make things go super fast with TempDB. So these are the demos that are planned. Let's jump over to Windows Explorer and I have organized these demos pretty well, pretty neatly. So here are the four demos that we are going to start with. Now, before I start with the first demo, TempDB files, multiple data files, I just want to quickly make you aware of the recent announcement. And when I say recent, I mean, this video might be watched a few months or a few years later also, but uh, nonetheless, uh, you should be aware of the, uh, should be aware of the master classes that we have recently announced. These are very popular SQL Server Performance Tuning Master Class class and this is a 40 hour master class that we have announced. This is happening for many years now, but the recent batch is now happening very soon. So if you go to sqlmaestros.com and click over here or master class announced here anywhere, and you come to the master class page, this is SQL Server internals, troubleshooting and performance tuning, 40 hour online master class. Uh, which is spread across two weeks. So we do four hours each day from Monday to Friday, and we are uh, doing it in two consecutive weeks. That is how we will cover the exhaustive content that you see here from module one, two, and all the way down to until module 14. A uh, deep dive focus on SQL Server internals, troubleshooting, and performance tuning. We are going to cover a lot about performance optimization, query tuning, etc. Take a look at the content. Uh, the URL for this masterclass is there in the chat window, so you can browse at your convenience. You might be wondering when are these classes happening? So as of this recording, if you're watching this recording, the class is happening from December 4 to 8, that is week 1, and then December 11 to 15, that is week 2, a total of 40 hours. And of course, if you're watching this recording some a few months or a few years later, uh, there will always be hopefully master classes online being delivered by me. Uh, and the quality of the master class is going to be really very similar to what you see right now, which is 
full HD um, live stream delivery, you know, so me on, on the corner there and you will have all this great content out there. One of the key highlights of this masterclass is apart from the exhaustive outline and, you know, the comprehensive content, deep dive demos, etc., is that you will get access to the recordings for lifetime. So the live masterclass is going to be recorded and you will have access to those recordings for lifetime, which means you can watch them over and over again as many times as you want. So if you are someone who is serious about SQL Server performance tuning, really want to go deep and want to kind of learn uh, a lot of in-depth about SQL Server, practical stuff that you can take and apply into production right away, deep dive content, uh, practical demos, real world demos that, that really matter, then you should opt for this masterclass. Otherwise, you're good with our webinars and our YouTube videos, etc. Okay, so be aware of this uh, masterclass, SQL Server Performance Tuning Masterclass from SQLMaestros.com. The link is there in the chat window. All right. Let's go back to our demos. So the first demo is on TempDB multiple data files. Let's double click on the folder. Let's get inside. First, I will open reconfigure tempdb.sql. All right, let's run this code, use tempdb. And first, let's have a look at how many data files are currently there in tempdb. Let's go and execute. So you will see that right now there is one log file. You can see the rows there and there is one, uh, sorry, one data file. This is the temp, uh, temp dev is the data file and then there is a log file. So what's this uh, funda all about tempdb multiple data files? Let's just go a, a few steps back and understand having multiple data files and then the importance of these trace flags like 1117 and 1118. So the best practice with SQL Server is to have multiple data files for your TempDB database. How many? Well, one data file per logical processor or one data file per core, you know, whatever you want to call it because the, the uh, architectural stuff with schedulers is very convoluted. You, you use the terms interchangeably like core or logical processors or physical processors, but the safest way to call this out is one data file per logical processor, which means that if your hardware has like 196 cores, do you really have 196 data files? No, you can start off with eight data files and go up to 16 or 32, but probably not more than that. In most scenarios, I've seen eight or 16 data files are just good enough. This is to distribute the processing, reading and writing from the data files across multiple processors. So that's the first best practice, having multiple data files. Now comes these trace flags, 1117 and 1118. And again, the best practice is that you should turn on these trace flags. 1117 trace flag, if you turn it on, you're telling SQL Server uh, to use multiple data files, which means whenever there is a need to um, add data to these data files, uh, SQL Server is going to use multiple or all, all, all of these data files together, which is parallel access and proportionate fill algorithm, which means all the data files are going to be used equally. So when they grow and when you're filling the data in them, they're going, going that's going to happen equally across all the data files. That is trace flag 1117. Remember when you turn this on, this is a global thing like when you turn it on for the instance, it affects all the databases, just not TempDB. And this is not a bad thing, right? Unless you have some edge case scenarios, you know, a very critical outlier that you want to turn this off. But other than that, it, it is good. It is generally good that you turn this on so that, uh, so otherwise your data files are going to be used sequentially. Let's say you have TempDB uh, eight data files. So f the, the first file is going to be filled up completely. Then it goes to the second file. It will get filled up completely. And then the third file, so on and so forth. So that's of course going to hinder performance. If you ha uh, have this trace flag turned on, all your data files are going to be used equally well uh, with the proportionate fill algorithm.